Hey there guys, I'm sure a lot of you know who I am from the videos that Monkey, or Tyler as I'll be calling him, like I always have. I wouldn't blame you if you have a overwhelmingly bad impression of me because of them. I've made some really bad mistakes, particularly with Dylan. Um, not denying and I'm not opposed to addressing it and saying what I did was wrong on that so on that subject though I want to add that I've cut off communication with Dylan permanently but it's not what I'm here to talk about today a lot of people have been asking about my relationship with Tyler and for reasons that will come become obvious I want to speak on it publicly I'm not here to try and vilify him or get sympathy. I just want to give my full truth on what happened, including the parts where I am even at fault. I've, I've done my best to stay as unbiased as I can and back up everything I say. I just want to add that a lot of this was from the beginning of the relationship, so we weren't texting a lot we were always together but towards the end when I get home that's when I can provide more evidence for you guys so I'm just going to jump right into this I'm going off script because I'm having trouble reading it so um once again um, Tyler has made several videos about me and him. What he says in a lot of them is true. What the one I'm going to be addressing is the proposal night, which, once again, what he said in the video is true. I'm not denying that, but Tyler has left out some very crucial details about that night. Um... Which I th should say one of the biggest was that we were both tripping on LSD. Um, I was on two tabs and he took a tab. And we were both smoking pretty heavily too. I'm not trying to blame the drugs or anything. But I do think this is a very important detail. I wanted to be in the room alone. I was like hiding in his office. I didn't really want to be near him. I didn't really want to be near anyone. I wasn't having the best LSD trip of my life. Um, and I mostly just called friends in the room and sat there and had some own, had some little breakdowns. I was wondering if going to Iowa was even a good idea. I talked to Dylan, he was one of the people I talked to, um, he, he calmed me down for a lot of, like, you know, everything I was going through, and we, we talked, and for some reason I was like, does it be a good idea if we get back? Like, I don't know. I don't think I was in the best headspace for that, and once again, re re repeating events, uh, like in the Breaking Bad video, I went to Tyler and I told him, hey, like, I, I think this is a good idea, and I went back to Dylan, and I was like, yeah, no, I want this, and then that's, I made up my mind, apparently, I thought I did. Um, and then later on, when I went back to Tyler, which, um, I actually felt guilty, and I was sleeping on the couch, because I thought he didn't want to see me, uh, he came to me and got me up, and we went to the room, and he proposed to me with a gift I got him, like, on one of our second dates, and I 
I opened it and well no he opened it I'm very very anxious and he proposed to me with our last tab of acid because he was supposed to take it after we um you know got our headspace off of it um and you know he proposed and I went into the room he told me to think on it and I broke it off with Dylan which I've I've had so many takes on right now because I'm so anxious um I wanted to get out that I think the biggest victim in this is Dylan this night fucked him up and I don't blame him he had to deal with me being on drugs and being so like uncertain and dragging his heart through the mud and that's what I really feel bad for and I cut it off with him me and me and Tyler talked about it and my way of saying yes in my own little fucked up way well not fucked up really was walking up to him and we uh we were hanging like my plane tickets that he got me like around the house and I walked up to him with my plane ticket and that's like he looked at me and he instantly knew he was like oh that's how you're saying yes and I was like nodded I was like really happy <laughs> and like I don't know it was just a really happy moment for me um even like coming down we uh took a drive I don't know why it was I thought it was a good idea cuz Tyler suggested it, but I took the other cab <laughs> that night so when we went for our drive we were listening to music and we went to his parents old house and we like looked at the sky and like this field and it was really nice but I ended up blacking out on the way home so I feel like I don't know that's the full truth to that night like we had some good talks about it and stuff like I don't know it was really happy it was a sad and happy night like I didn't even know he was having his little crisis I wish I did but I was in the room having my own but you know it all worked out in the end so I want to talk about the before to that video um when Tyler finally got to making it three weeks later like after the engagement um he he recorded it and he was editing it in his room I was in the room with him and he looks at me and he goes, just so you know, I'm not editing anything out. And I was like, okay, like, I didn't really know what to think of it. Um, and then we go in the room and we, we watch the video together, like, to review it. And I just, obviously, I didn't like it, like you know, obviously, like, everyone knows what's in it, and, you know, I told him, I was like, that's not everything that happened, like, he also originally said we'd do it together, which would make more sense to me, um, and he just said, like, he's still uploading it, he's not deleting it, he's not taking it down, um, because he also told me that the video is going to be, like, talking about, like, the entire engagement and how special it was. And just, I don't know, that's what I had the impression. Um, he was saying, like, oh, everyone's going to love us again. And it's, like, like, all this stuff. And I was, like, I don't really think that, like, I don't even think this is a good idea for you. Um... And then after we had some fighting about the video, um, because there are points where 
he even downplays our engagement where I'll show a clip so yeah in a roundabout way it is a proposal but there's no marriage uh, date set it's more of a commitment to to take the relationship seriously and say hey there's not going to be any fooling around or any funny business let's just let's just be together and be happy because i know we can and and when he says this he's basically saying like oh we're we're just we're just committed like the engagement's nothing like you know like and it's like tyler that's just a normal relationship that's not like you don't have to be engaged to me to be loyal you know like and then later on like you know more fighting and talking about it and we got to him admitting more stuff saying things like oh i want everyone to see how much you hurt me and he said he only proposed to me to get me away from Dylan. So, pretty much the engagement wasn't really anything. Something else I want to talk about, which isn't, like really a truth but I feel like this should just be down um what Tyler says about Patchy in the How I Broke Bad video which I'll show a clip and I thought man that's that's what a brother is for you could commit a fucking mass shooting and he'll still he'll get he'll say you are a motherfucker but he'll still be there for you and give you a hug so that you feel some piece of humanity left because that your family is is the people who who treat you with humanity even when the world thinks of you as a degenerate subhuman piece of shit and and for Patchy to to seemingly from from those posts uh, to not I don't know. All I'm saying is that regardless of any choice he made in his life, if he needed me there for him, I would be there for him. And for him to say he would not be willing to come over here, like. I never want Tyler to choose between me and his family or his friends or like, you know, any close relationships he had. Like, I, like, I encouraged him to keep contact with like everything, like even sheep, like, cause it made him happy. And like, you know, at first, like some people didn't want to meet me, which was fair. And it's like, you know, that. I completely understand. I'm not upset about that, but like he he makes this video, but Patchy came over. Like Patchy was Patchy was trying. Like like he he gave Tyler the Yang Gang button. <laughs> Yang Gang. And you know, I I constantly told Tyler like, you know, you you could go to their house, like, you, you can call them, like, you, like, you say he lives right down the street, like, you, you can go to him without me, like, I don't need to be there, like, reach, reach out, like, I don't want you to lose, like, your family, and, you know, he would just say, like, oh, well, if, if they don't, if they don't want to see you, if they can't accept us, then I don't want to see them, and it's like, it's like, Tyler, like, you can't wait for everyone to come to you, like, this is a, this is a really touchy subject, and I, like, I constantly told him, just drive to Patchy's house, like, just drive to your parents, just sit and, just sit and talk with them, you know, like, 
so that that's one thing I just really want to get out like off my chest because you know as much as Patchy doesn't like me I don't I, I don't like the way he's he's you know put in this video and I really never liked it like you know Patchy you you tried you came over like you were really nice you played shine down in the car like I really appreciate like you at least like still coming so like thank you for that so the next thing I'm addressing is when we first got together again because Tyler was Tyler says like we're both mentally sick and the she's gone video I think it goes without saying that both she and I are uh, very much mentally ill and we're on or at least supposed to be on a lot of uh, medications that fuck with our brains and uh, make us emotionally unstable at times and I I've come to realize that two sick people living alone together cannot help each other get better if anything they just make each other worse and you know i knew i knew tyler was going through a rough thing and you know tyler tyler knew i i was too like um i just got out of the psych ward he was talking to me in the hospital i know there's like tweets of him saying that he was talking to me there and i was just on a ton of medications like like he knew i, I wasn't really okay in the head at the time and you know, he said, he said he forgave me, you know, about the meat man drama and stuff like, you know, and I, I tried telling him, like, I don't think it's a good idea to go to Iowa because, you know, I'm not over my ex right now and, you know, I'm lashing out, I'm sending friends, like, random friends, like, nudes, like, you know, I'm... I'm really not stable for you right now. It's not a good idea. He he reassured me to stay a month and I can leave whenever I needed. Like, at, at least we tried. And we did mostly have calls, but these are the screenshots that I could find uh, addressing the issues. I ended up going to Iowa and, you know, it was, it was pretty normal in the beginning. Um, the, this is public knowledge because Tyler got mad at me for it, for talking about it on a stream, but he was talking to me a lot about getting a third partner, like a girlfriend who would want to play with a couple and you know, like, one night, like, I was woken up while he was high, so benefit of the doubt, and he made me a tinder, like, with my face, and said, like, oh, like, I, I made you an account, like, so we can find, like, a girl who, like, wants to experiment, like, with a couple, and I was just, like, like... I don't think I had to say anything because he knew how I felt because later on he came to me and he was like, oh, I, 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 I deleted it. Like, you know, like, I was like, yeah, like, I don't know. That's it's just a little weird. Like, it, it still got brought up in conversation and it's just like, I don't know, not really something I'm into. There was also on and offs with Tyler of 
him telling me like you know like oh like I don't really want you on your meds because he didn't like how my libido was down so I was on and off my meds and um I have I have to bring up what I was taking but I know one of them was like kal Klonopin and um like, just a bunch of, like, Prozac and Gabapentin and, like, there were two more. And, like, it, like, it, it started making me sick in the beginning. I wasn't really recognizing it. And then I just went on and off until I eventually just ran out of them. And I had a really bad withdrawal week. So, we didn't really work on getting the meds back, so I was off all my medications from the hospital at this point. I was just, I got over my withdrawal and I was just not medicated anymore, so, whoa. And then, like... One of the other things I did wrong, one of the other issues was I, uh, when he made me mod in his server, he, uh, I, no, I, yeah, I made Mr. Animated Demon a mod in the monkey server, in the monkey Patreon server, which was a complete mistake, um, for a different reason than what everyone had thought. Um, Demon was kicking a few people on the server and added Meat Man. Uh, Tyler had no idea that Meat Man was added to the server. And when I asked, like, he had he had no idea. And, like, here's a tweet, like, confirming that. Uh, he, he was more upset because a patron that was kicked, like, demanded a refund. And... He lost a $25 patron and he sat me down and I got a really, really stern talking to, but I just feel like that contradicts the state of affairs video, which I'll show a clip of. And one of those things is doing this internet stuff. I love making videos. I love doing podcasts, I love making comedy, I love entertaining people. And even if I lose all of my support, that Patreon dries up to zero dollars, nobody's watching anymore, as long as I'm still having fun making videos, I'm gonna keep making them, I'm gonna keep doing podcasts, I'm gonna keep doing all the things that you guys like to see from me. I have a screenshot about the demon situation. Um, I do want to add I really fucked up by adding demon. I went against Tyler's wishes and abused my power. Um, stuff got more rocky in the relationship because I was having a hard time cutting contact with Dylan, which Admittedly, I can understand being a large issue and I take full blame for this. I have finally cut contact with Dylan and don't plan on trying to contact him anytime in the future. The next big issue that essentially ended the relationship was me going on the Ralph stream. Tyler speci specified he absolutely forbidden me to go on but I, I really wanted to get my side out somehow. Tyler said he would help me work on a video and um, it eventually went to, oh, like do it yourself or I'll help you edit it to um, not doing it at all. So I guess like now I'm finally here doing it, but I insisted and insisted until you know, I just was like, I'm just going on this stream, like, I just, like, I, I trust him, you know, Ralph, once again, kept his word, he was very nice, like, he was 
anyone who's seen that stream knows that that wasn't the issue. Um, and I lied to Tyler and told him that I was going to watch a movie with a friend and not to knock on my door or come in the room. This is going to be a harder part for me in the recording, but once again, I went on the Ralph stream anyway, and anyone who saw that episode would understand the, the real problem that happened at the end. I don't really need to say it, and I was having a panic attack after, and... I was just so upset, which was fair, like I deserved it, and I knew Tyler would get mad at me, so I knew I wasn't really going to have a form of support, so I called one of my close friends, and no, I texted him, and I said, can you buy me a lift, here's the address to the hospital, call Tyler once I get to the hospital, like I was... I was a nervous wreck, and he he called the lift, and I tried to sneak out of the house to go, and Tyler caught me trying to leave, and I, I was just so fucking manic, I just walked out, I was pacing up and down the street, like, Tyler was telling me to come in, he had no idea what was going on. We eventually got into the house, and I was just crying, and I couldn't really talk or make anything out, and he uh, just started screaming at me, and, like, saying, like, oh, like, fucking speak, like, like, what the fuck is wrong with you, like, you tried to abandon me in the middle of the night, you're you're so fucking horrible, and it's like, it's, it's like, that was just really hard, he, he didn't want me leaving to my lift, he, it just, it was really rough and a lot of stress, and then I eventually just murdered out that I went on the stream through all this panic and stress, and he got up from the bed and he said, get dressed, you're going to the hospital and when you get out, I'm taking you to the airport and you're leaving. And at that point, I just, I just broke even more and I was just begging and begging like for him to like hold me or help me that night and uh he didn't even want to look at me and I guess that's fair like So, that was just a really hard night. The thing that hit the nail in the coffin was I stayed a couple more weeks after this this incident and he took me to get my hair done because I just got a job and we uh, saw his friend and his friend did it for me. Um, so I wanted to dye my hair for my new job. Um, and she, she was going to upload it to Instagram and, you know, she wanted to be credited because I said I might repost this. And I said, like, listen, like, I don't, I don't think I can. Like, she doesn't know the drama. And I said, like, I, I, I just don't feel safe crediting you. Um, I got home, I posted, she was like, oh, like, you can credit me. Like, it's fine. I was like, all right, like, I'll just private my Instagram, like. I don't think, like, no one's gone after my family. I doubt they're going to go after friends. So I tagged her in the Instagram post. And <clears throat> when Tyler found out, he 
lost his shit. I, I, I tried to tell him I'll, I'll delete it. I'll like, I'll delete my Instagram. Like, I'm sorry. Like he, he was convinced that it was, it was too late. I, I contacted this friend later and she said she didn't get a single message. He, uh, really went off on me and was calling me all sorts of names. Like, you're fucking retarded. You're a bitch. You're a cunt. Just screaming in my face and he was like you're fucking going home and I I just locked myself in my office that he got me and I I remember passing out in there and he knocked on the door and he came in uh I forgot when but I know during the screaming it happened again when he came in and he left and I sent him a text and I said, you're acting like a monster. And that just made him come in and get completely worse. And he was screaming so bad to the point where I just shut down and I know at one point like he was saying like fucking get up or I'm throwing you out like get up or I'm throwing you out and I got up and we moved to the bedroom and he he didn't buy the ticket it was like a taunt like he has finger on the button to make the purchase and it was just give me a fucking reason now why why I'm not a monster like what just like just screaming and screaming and I just finally like gave up and muttered like just buy it press the button and and he did he got the he got the ticket and right after he got the ticket things just he he broke down and he he was holding me and crying and telling me like oh you're not bad i'm i was a good person like everyone hates you for just trying to love someone you just wanted to love someone like you know he he i i don't know if he felt bad but it's it seemed like and i just you know i wanted to be there too cuz i just wanted him to hold me i was even trying to hold him during the screaming and I just got pushed away and now he's finally holding me and that's all I wanted and he told me so we're gonna make we're gonna make a video together like about this like don't worry and I was like okay and something happened it took up a chunk of our time um I I just got sick and we came home and we had enough time and I said, are we still making the video about, you know, me, me leaving? Um, and he said, I'm not, I'm not even going to make it. And during this time, like, cause I only had a day, it was like, it was all talk. He was saying like, you know, once we're emotionally better, like we'll get back together. Like I promise, like I, I have like a screenshot of it. Um, even to the airport right before we left, like, we were just, like, it went from a fight to we were just so in love at the time. It's the best way I can explain it. And he even said before I left, like, we're gonna, we're gonna get back together, like, once we're better. And I was like, you know, okay, like, I think, I think that's needed. And... I had to quit my job and drop a bunch of doctor's appointments. So this was a stressful mess just leaving. Um, Tyler did help me. He, he gave me a good amount of money to live off of before I left. And, you know, that was nice. But um, when I was on my second transfer flight, um, I get a text and I find out Tyler made the video and... He didn't tell me, it just dropped on top of my head. 
and I saw the title and I immediately knew we're not getting back together. Like, I already know what he's doing because he would cry to me and he would say, I just want everyone to love me again. And it's like, I wanted that, you know, for him too. And uh, he just started to flip-flop and uh, I'll show in the screenshots that I'm going to provide, which I will admit I started to pester him. I was, I was really scared because I didn't want to lose Tyler. Like I didn't want this to end like this. I, like I felt like I just got tricked into going home. And after this, I just pestered him. Like point of contacting him through other twitters different phone numbers emails snapchat telegram like everything i like i was just trying to get contact with him i even gave friends his phone number to reach out i gave dylan his phone number to reach out because he said he was going to change it the next day and i was like i'm i'm going to lose him and I just got emails back, one of them saying if I got therapy consistently for six months, he'd talk to me again, and then he changed his mind, and I contacted him on another Twitter, and he didn't really address the thing I wanted to contact him for, instead he only replied to ask me this. And now it just felt like he was trying to keep tabs on me. I I ended up getting another ultimatum. I want to point out how he says it stresses him out that I won't leave him alone. And that's completely understandable. I, I just want to keep that in mind for later. And then he tells me every month I spend offline, I can talk to him. It, I feel like he's using my attachment issues against me. He knows how desperately I want to talk to him. And later on, um, I get these messages on Snapchat. And these really messed me up because I tried talking to him to the point where I was flat out obsessive and this is what I'm asked in return like I've been extremely weak trying to write this script I've been on and off trying to see if he still cares like if this isn't really what he means. Uh, it's been on and off blocking. He flat out said after he sent me these texts that he was being honest. All he would want me for was drugs and sex if I came down. I constantly told Tyler I wanted to make a video on my side, but he didn't let me. It it does feel nice to finally get out here. So once I got home, Tyler had mentioned that he wasn't going to get back with me because everyone was saying how proud of him they were and like everyone was coming back and it's like, you know, I was happy, but it's just like, I, I don't know, it just hurt. Like, he even told me Patchy was coming over and I should be happy. Even though I still feel like Patchy would have came over if he tried better to contact his brother. He also recently admitted in, uh, in a podcast of his where... He admits to destroying, like, me and sheep. Because it, it seems to me like 
the last two girls who are probably ever going to love me, I ruined them. I I shattered their hearts and I ruined their lives in front of literally hundreds of thousands of people. M most people who get cheated on or broken up with or whatever, yeah, it hurts, but you get over it. But I, I publicly embarrassed and broke the hearts of and ruined the lives of two people who not only sincerely loved me but i loved them and and it kills me that there's literally nothing i can do to make the pain go away for them or for me basically like because we're going to be known online now because of who he is and like during this time i was just begging him for some kind of consistency since he wasn't like he's aware of what he did and i feel like like he's he's pretending to feel some kind of sympathy on one of our last talks this this has been updated but like this was after I talked about the Tinder situation on my art stream that's now deleted. I also want to add that Tyler went into more detail about me and Dylan in the I Broke Bad video without mentioning the crucial details and even saying later on, like I've already mentioned, I want everyone to see how much you hurt me. Like, I feel like what he did is the same situation with Jackie and Berger. He felt threatened and hurt. Because in the call with Meat Man that was recorded, we even talked about how they were fighting because Tyler was making jokes about the situation and ended up making it public again because he felt threatened. He, he, like, he didn't need to make that issue public at all for them. Like... Like, th there was no point, except it was to justify himself. And he goes from sympathetic in the video to quickly spiteful, which... Uh, we have to remember that she is a victim of violent domestic abuse, and that she is currently justifying the abuser in her mind and desperately wants him to come home. Which is just textbook, and clearly I can't help her anymore. So if any of you know Jackie, please try to, to get in contact with her to help her. I think like therapy would be the first thing because things are not right. Like she really needs the help, so if you know her, please help her. Lady Stockholm does not have the mental capability to research whether or not I have a sister before spreading the malicious lie that I'm fucking one. I, I hope this happens again and nobody answers your call. Fuck you! I can relate with because I feel like he's doing the same with me, which... Not to go off topic, but this... But I really want to get out that he should just leave them alone. He knows they're no threat, and he even admits it. Uh, I think in this comparison, you know, your your big bad is Maddox. And yeah. My my big bad in this scenario is Asperger, but Asperger is far from my biggest problem, and and Maddox is your biggest one. Uh, Asperger is like uh, if. If my problems are like a Mario characters, you know, YouTube taking down my shit, that's Bowser. Yes. Fuck, Asperger's a fucking Goomba. It's so easy to kill him. I push A once and he's dead because he's nothing yes. to me. Well, at the same time. Oh, God, I miss burgers. I mean, I miss eating burgers. Oh, God, how embarrassing. But from what it stands now, I tried to get back into contact with Tyler and I tried giving him my hand and seeing if we can talk civilly 
because I, I wanted to. And it didn't go well. I tried my best to be reasonable. I wasn't taking more screenshots or recording him after because I'm not trying to bait him. I was really trying to let this go naturally and I'm at the point where I'm where I just really feel like my side should be out.